Hello there YouTube, so I've got an update to the blocks render that I've been working on and uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. So the first thing that you may notice if you've watched the other videos is that I have an actual menu uh, and, and font. This is all Roboto font rendered through SDLTTF um, and then loaded into OpenGL and each each uh, text box is only two triangles and the entire word is read in and stored in a single buffer instead of characters alone just because it works a little bit better. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and open up a new world and it's going to start generating uh, a world that's just just larger than 800 blocks on a, on a side. Um, it's all multi-threaded here and uh, it's running on four threads and that was how long that took I guess. Um, the next thing that you might notice here is how fast the world just loaded in its mesh and actually it's not done yet um, what actually has happened there is as soon as the world loads the um, initial meshing function is that it takes my character's position and shoots out like 10,000 rays and uh, marks all those chunks to uh, get meshed first if they get hit um, and that way only the surface chunks uh, really get loaded right, right away and uh, you don't waste any time rendering empty chunks um, now the next thing that I've kind of implemented here are uh, save files so you can see I'm going to remove a big chunk of this mountain and then I'm just going to exit right back to the main menu hitting the button right now and uh, that's how long it took to save and then if I go ahead and load that same world it's almost instantaneous uh, the entire world does load in that fast straight out of memory I believe this is about a 50 or 60 megabyte save file so it does help that I have my SSD in my, my computer um, but uh, it is quite fast I'm quite happy with it um, the way the save files work is Uh, so, I have a, a whole API essentially um, dedicated to the save files, and you can create a save file, um, and on opening it, automatically creates a backup and never restores it. But uh, just in case, um, but if I were to open up the save file in a hex editor, of course, it looks like a giant, huge uh, mesh here. Um, but the first six bytes are simply blk sav for a block save file. Uh, and then after that, um, the save file consists of essentially a bunch of name sections and an initial header, which is what we're looking at now, um, where each of those sections is named and then a pointer to where the actual data for that section lives. So after, if I were to scroll past this header here, we get into the actual save file. Um, and the way this works is it's it's just an octree. Um, it's, a, it's a serialized octree. Um, I won't really get into that. Uh, back into blocks again here. Um, all the updates and things are still in blocks, of course. So I've got water that can be updated here. And I've got uh, the same sand that falls around and does its thing. Um, and there is a difference with these updates. Um, the difference being if any chunk uh, happens to notice that it, it has to run more than around 100 updates per update cycle, then that chunk will uncompress itself, uh, meaning it will no longer store any of its data in an octree, and it will simply store it in a 3D array. Um, and that, that, that's just, just uh, simply because the octree um, reads and writes are extremely slow and um, this lets us uncompress only the world, the section of the world that is being read and written to the most and uh, it it lets there be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of updates per, per tick and it still runs at a reasonable speed. The very last optimization that I've made is that uh, I'm running this all on a GTX 760 and it only has two gigabytes of video memory. And I was running into an issue um, 
where Blocks was simply eating up all of my, my usable memory and then sig faulting or uh, sig killing because it was uh, my computer's out of memory. And the reason for that was I was storing every single vertice of every single block here um, uh, as a few floats, you know, three floats for position and three floats for colors, um, which is quite a few bytes. And instead, I have switched to element um, using element buffers instead of vertice buffers. And the way that works is I create one extremely large um, buffer holding all of the possible uh, vertice position and colors for an entire chunk, which really is quite enormous. Um, and then just indexing to that uh, with elements, um, which even though that initial chunk with all the combinations is quite large, I believe it can be up to 100 or 200 megabytes large. Um, being able to index into that with a single short or with extreme really large chunk sizes, it would be an integer. Um, it's a huge memory saver, and this is actually currently only using a few hundred megabytes of video memory. So uh, that really is quite nice. Um, and from there, that's really all I have that uh, has changed. The world generation is all the same, and uh, really everything else is exactly the same. There are still a few bugs, like if um, a world's super laggy, I can accidentally fly through walls, but I still haven't gotten around to regarding the entity entity logic and whatnot, which uh, really does need a big rewrite. So, yeah, really that is pretty much it. So, thank you for watching, watching and listening. <laughs>